Hi everyone, it's Chelsea. I'm an educational program specialist at the Palmer Museum of Art. I'm excited to welcome you all to this installment of Online Art Club. Thank you so much for following along as we explore the many and different types of artwork in the Palmer Museum's collection. Today, we're gonna to take some time to look at examples of artwork that pops. Often, when we imagine artwork in a museum, we think of flat paintings hanging against a wall or sculptures perched on pedestals. However, there are many examples of art that doesn't really fit neatly into either of those categories. In fact, artists throughout history have developed many ways to make their artwork move or appear to move as the viewer interacts with it. Let's take a look at some different examples of art that pops. At the Palmer, we have several examples of what's called kinetic art. Kinetic art is, can be made of any material. The only requirement is that it is, includes movement that the viewer can see, hear, or feel. This work from 1965 is titled Spring Blossoms, and it is by Alexander Calder, who was one of the most famous kinetic artists in history. Calder is known for making mobiles like this one. Similar to the mobiles that hang over a baby's crib, Calder created lightweight, lightweight sculptures that gently move and spin in the air. This sculpture is made from painted metal and wire. It hangs from the ceiling far above the heads of viewers as at the museum. As people move below the sculpture, gentle breezes shift the arms of the mobile, making new and ever-changing compositions with the shapes. Outside the museum, in the pavilion, we have a very large kinetic sculpture by George Rickey. This metal sculpture, which is on loan to the museum, is called Breaking Column 3, and it dramatically shifts and spins in the breeze. The sculpture acts almost like a weather vane and reveals to passers-by the power and grace of the wind. Other artists have developed ways to make their work pop by tricking our eyes with optical illusions. Op art was a movement which came into popularity in the mid-1900s, and it relies on visual techniques that make flat artwork appear to have depth. Here we can see examples by Bridget Riley, Henry Pearson, and Annie Albers, which use color, line, and shape to create the illusion that their work is popping out towards us or receding back into space. Our last example of art that pops will lead us right into our art making activity for today. Here we see the work Dali Salad by the artist Red Grooms. It depicts the famous artist Salvador Dali, who was known for his surreal paintings, long mustache, and kooky personality. Let's take a closer look at this work. What do you think it is? And what is it made of? Is it a print? Is it a sculpture? Maybe it's a collage? This work is unique because it's a combination of several mediums and techniques. Here, the artist has taken flat printed pieces of paper and shaped and glued them to create a three-dimensional picture with pieces that come off the page like a pop-up book. The subject's face and hands are especially noticeable as they come off the paper towards the viewer. The pop-out quality of this work is even more noticeable on the strawberry, monarch butterflies, and the iconic curled mustache of Salvador Dali, which adorn this picture. Today, we're going to draw inspiration from this pop-up picture and create our own pop-up cards. I'll, be, I'll start by showing you the basic steps to make a pop-out card. Then we'll check in with our friends on the education team to learn some more techniques and see what they came up with. To make your pop-up card, you'll need some supplies to get started. You'll want cardstock paper or any type of thick paper, scissors, a pencil, and a glue stick. It may also be helpful to have colored paper, tape, and something to color with, like markers, colored pencils, or pastels. To start your project, fold your paper in half to create a card. On the folded edge, draw a rectangle. This will become the base where we can glue on our, our pop-out components. Cut into the short edges of the rectangle and open your card. Turn that rectangle inside out so that it's folding the opposite direction of your card. You could add more rectangles if you want to have more spaces to add pop-out components. You can fold those rectangles inside out too so that when the card folds down, it's completely flat. For my card, I'm going to make something for my parents. They live in Colorado and I live in Ohio, so I think I'm going to do use two of the rectangles to glue on different states, one for them and one for me, and a big heart in the middle. Then on the bottom, I'm gonna add script with a nice message for them. I just use regular markers and cardstock paper to make this. 
I made sure that my shapes that I cut out weren't too big because I didn't want them to come out the edge when the paper or when the card folded down. Now I'm ready to glue on my pieces. With a glue stick, uh, glue onto the edge of the rectangle and attach your pieces firmly. You can also use tape by going around the back of the rectangle and taping the pieces on from behind. Now I'm gonna add some fun script uh, just to send a nice message telling them that I'm sending love and saying hello. After you're finished decorating the inside, you can get a piece of colored paper, some kind of larger paper to go around the outside of your card and hide the areas where your rectangles have been cut out. Trace your card onto the larger paper and cut out a piece that's big enough to go around the edge. Then with a glue stick, attach your paper to your card. Here's my finished card. I think it turned out really well and it folds down completely flat because the pieces are glued onto those rectangles that are cut out from the middle. Let's see what our friends on the education team made for this project. I think the coolest thing about pop-up cards is that there's so many ways to make them and you can really get creative and do a bunch of different things. For this technique, I decided to cut shapes out of the fold in the paper. This way, when you open the card, instead of having the little rectangle boxes that you can attach to, you'll actually have shapes that kind of pop out. For this, I decided to make hearts that popped out. So in this example, by cutting out the full heart, there's going to be two hearts that pop out of the middle. I cut the little line in the fold to make sure that it stays attached and pops out, cut the heart, and then cut another two lines going into the edge of the card to attach it to the middle of the card. I use an X-Acto knife for this, so if you're going to use an X-Acto knife, make sure that you have help and just be careful. Since I was cutting these hearts, I thought it was easier to use an X-Acto knife, but you can definitely also use scissors. For this, you kind of just decide what shape that you want, and it's definitely a trial and error process. I recommend using just a piece of printer paper or any scrap paper that you have, folding it out and testing how the shapes look. For this one, I definitely messed up a few times, and I'm glad that I tried it out on printer paper first to make sure that it looked good. You can think of any shape that you want and make it different designs and really fun. For this, like I said, I decided to use hearts, so I decided to make the rest of my card heart themed. I grabbed some pieces of colored paper and I wanted to cut out some heart shapes and add them to the card. I just picked some colors that I thought would look good together. Here you can see I cut out different size heart shapes and I just kind of randomly glued them throughout the card. This card isn't that exciting and I definitely could have added more, but I like that it's blank and I think I'm definitely going to send it to someone at some point and write a message in it that's kind of related to why I'm sending it. You can make a bunch of just generic cards and have them on hand to send to people whenever you feel like sending someone a nice message and a cool little card. Like the other examples, you take a second piece of cardstock and take that and fold it the size of the card and then you'll just glue the cutout pop-up card that you have into the other piece of cardstock. That way you won't see the cuts in the holes whenever you open the card. You can decorate the outside however you want. For my pop-up card, I decided to combine both methods of making pop-up stuff. I cut a box in the middle and I also glued things in. So I started by folding the paper and cutting out the slits in the middle to make a box, which I then cut up some more paper and designed into a gift box because I wanted to make a Christmas card. And once I finished that, I cut little strips of red paper and made accordion folds and cut out little green balls to kind of make like Christmas ornaments for those to pop out when the card opened as well. Um, but I figured out the the accordions were kind of flimsy, so it was hard to like close them flat whenever I closed the card. But it turned into, I made it a Christmas card and once everything was glued in, I wrote Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and tried to make that writing look nice. So my card ended up um, having both processes of cutting something out of the card and popping it out and then also gluing something else in, gluing things in. And I think it turned out pretty well other than the fact that my accordion folds were kind of weak, but 
it looks festive and I think I'll add a little more color to it later, but yeah, this is how it turned out. Hi, this is Ngyang. Today I'm going to make a card with a heart that pops. You'll need scissors, a knife, a glue stick, or washable glue, several colored construction papers. First, fold the paper to make a card, and we'll draw and cut the big heart. Since we need six of them in the same size, I will overlap six papers, fold them all in half, and cut at once. This is the easiest way to cut the same size shapes. Especially folding helps you get a better shape that both sides are identical. And then put glue on one side and place next one on top. Please repeat it. Then I will draw a bear and cut it off. You can draw and cut any animals that you want. You can cut the bear's hands and feet if you want. I will put the bear's face first and put hearts on the card. Please make sure the folding line would be aligned with the center of the card. And then hands and feet would be put on the card too. And facial expression time. I am drawing the eyes, nose, and mouth on the face. Then we will decorate the other part of the card with small hearts. Draw some hearts on the various color paper and cut them off. You can also overlap and fold papers to cut several hearts at once. Ta-da! The bear is delivering a popping heart. Send your loving message to your family with this card. Wow, that was really fun. I can't wait to send these cards to my family over the holidays. Show us what you made by posting photos of your work with the hashtag Palmer Online Art Club. We love seeing all the amazing artwork you create. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time.